Hi, it's Ryan from Knights Around the Table, and you know what time it is. I've got another reboxing for you with an insert for Roll for the Galaxy from company Laser Ox, who makes their inserts out of birch. And they must know what a gigantic Roll for the Galaxy nerd I am. I played this. This is one of the most pop played games in my collection. It's nice because we have a little patio outside the house on the deck. So many of these games you can't put on a table that has an umbrella stand in the middle, you know what I mean? But Roll for that Galaxy is one that you can kind of spread out and that not being able to access the center of the table doesn't make that much of a difference. Now this is one of the most important games I think in my collection to own an insert for. And if you don't have this game, you're not interested in this game, I think you might still be able to pick something up from this video. Because I, I just find it interesting to see the decisions that these companies make in trying to fit, you know, the, the games inside. So I'll give you an example with this one. So the Stardust storage thing from Laserox, like I say, made out of wood, it is compatible with Roll for the Galaxy, the base game right over here, and Roll for the Galaxy Ambition, which was the first expansion. But note that it is not compatible with... Roll for the Galaxy Rivalry, which is the second expansion. At the time of this recording, there, there are currently two expansions for the game. Why is that? Well, I thought at first it was because there is no way on God's green that you could fit everything in these two boxes into the base game. Until I started doing a little bit of research and I poked around and looked at one of their competitors, which is Folded Space. Now, Folded Space makes their inserts out of foam core and they're a great deal less expensive because you can imagine it costs more money to cut down a tree than to kill whatever animal foam core comes from. However, I think that it, we talk about decisions that people make, and I'm, I'm, you've seen some of the stuff on the other series, Bits Please. Bits Please! Where I'm 3D printing inserts and I'm starting to design compartments more and more for myself. And it's just interesting, the decisions, I mean, this stuff isn't easy. It's not easy to figure out how to put everything back in the box. So check out some of the decisions that the Folded Space crew made. Uh, this one, I think, is a little bit, it's not a decision I would make. So normally these tiles all go in a black bag and they've made a compartment to stick them all in the compartment. And I don't know, that just means that during teardown, you gotta take all of the tiles out of the bag, stack them all up, stick them in the compartment. Is it a big deal? I'm not too sure. I'd rather just mash my bag down. But that mashy bag, as we'll see when I open this box, takes up a whole lot of room. Check this out. So this is the current state of my box. It has some stuff from Rivalry in it, the nicer player screens. It has all three rule books in it. These come in the base game. And this big, like I say, this gigantic draw bag of tiles, all the tiles are, are, are in there. Right, and the folded space crew thought, oh, we'll just stick them in a big sleeve. So I'd rather just at the end of the game, blah, mash that whole bag in there. But you can see it's all like, it, it's, it likes to, spread out like the the blob in that 50s horror movie uh, and then you have a bunch of you know, dice obviously it's a dice rolling game and all these starting tiles and you get tons and tons with the expansions so this whole stack not this whoa see this is this is why we need an insert folks so this whole stack right here is starting tiles this massive pile so that's already, you know, gigantic. And then this whole stack here is also starting tiles. So let me just see, uh, I'm gonna try to turn that on its side so you can see. Anyway, the box, like the box is a total horrible, horrible mess. Um, but the other, a couple of the other decisions that were made in the folded space insert, they have four compartments in the middle where they've sorted all the different colors of dice. Like you don't need that really. The way the game works, you just, throw the dice into just a gigantic massive pile and that's okay because you only need to pluck a couple of colors out at the beginning of the game and really I don't understand why the game contains this many dice there's no way that you're ever going to go through this many dice in a game it's just not gonna happen I haven't seen it happen anyway I just play two players so maybe that's part of the problem but you, know, you can come up with a creative things in here like I've got stuff crammed in here um, but it, it, it doesn't really do the it doesn't really do the trick so like, I guess, yes, you can fit it in the entire box. Should you fit it in like one single box? I, I'm not, I don't, I don't know. Let's put this laser ox thing together and, and, and see how they did it. Now, this retails for 39.90 Great British Pounds. 
which comes out to, mm, what is that, 42 bucks American or 51 Canuck bucks. And if you think I just did that math in my head, you're sore mistaken. I was just trying to remember the numbers I looked up before making the video. So that's what it costs. Meanwhile, the uh, like something from Folded Space is going to cost you more like between 15 and 20 bucks, depending where you are. So quite a big cost differential for sure. Now you need a couple things when you're going to put these uh, laser ox wood inserts together. You're going to need a big mallet and you're going to need a craft knife. All of this stuff is pre-cut except sometimes you should be able to twist all the parts out. They've just left two connection points. So th they mostly twist out fine, but I find with the thinner pieces um, where it's a little bit dicier, if you just go knock knock with your little craft knife, then you can cut out those notches and the stuff frees up more easily. They, woohoo, woohoo, we're having a good time. This is some Gorilla wood glue. What they recommend is you put the whole thing together and then you take it apart and then you glue it all back together. What I've recommended in past reboxing videos is that everything fits really, really tightly together. So you put it all together and you're really eager to glue it. And you try to pry it all apart. You could very easily snap the pieces. What I recommend is letting it sit. Just let it breathe for a few days, even a few weeks and loosen up a little bit before you try to gently massage all those pieces apart. Or if you got the cojones, you can just glue it together right off the bat. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to show you a time lapse of this thing coming together and I don't want it to be super boring or take hours and fill up my hard drive. Uh, I mentioned the mallet. They'll sell you one that's more appropriately sized, but this one is because later on I'm going to murder Judge Doom. Right. Well, let's get onto it. I'm going to crack it open. I'll show you the instructions. I'll put it all together in a time lapse and then I'll have some comments about what it was like to put it together. Here we go. surprises in that package things I wasn't expecting it, here I was going to show you the instruction booklet so it's just one sheet and it lists all the parts on one side and then on the other side it's saying you know grab this part from there grab this part from there one of the things I think they should have done and they have in their other products is that should be on two separate pages so you've got the parts list on one slip and then the instructions on another because otherwise you're just like oh g3 which one's that again oh if, and then if you look at, at, at this section it says required parts c4 d5 d6 e1 e3 f1 g4 times 2 g5 times 2 g6 it's a little bit annoying having to flip back and forth. Not a huge deal. One of the parts was mislabeled. D3 was mislabeled as D1, I think. Again, not a huge deal because you could tell from the shape what it was supposed to be. But uh, as far as surprises go, uh, I did not expect plastic bits at all. Look, this is a this is a big, beautiful piece of frosted acrylic that goes over this box. And they also put in these thingies, which are, it's hard, I, they have a protective film on them, which I use my craft knife to sort of peel off, so they might now be hard to see on camera, but if I put them up against something, da, 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 I don't even know. You know, they're kind of like, if you've, if you've played Terraforming Mars, the big complaint there is that your cubes slide around, and if they slide around, you forget where they were, and it's a big pain in the butt, and it can wreck the game. Uh, it's really interesting that they made something so you can buy uh sorry lost my train of thought you can buy uh, acrylic or wood overlays so that the cubes stay put in that game i'm surprised though that they did that with this game because i never really had that problem with this game did you did you ever play roll for the galaxy and your your dice are moving around like you you place them and it's not a big deal that they get knocked because based on the face, you kind of know where to put them back and they're not there for very long. Unlike terraforming Mars, where your cubes are there for a good long time and there's, you know, six or seven or eight of them to keep track of. That's not really the case here, but I thought I would, they also have these, uh, what do they call these? 
spine bars. I don't know if that's the technical term, but here's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to take the little dice strip and you're supposed to take your spine bar and attach it like that. And then you're supposed to take the acrylic or mylar piece. Is that acrylic? Is that mylar? Ooh, you know what? I really don't want to wreck this, even though there's new ones that came in rivalry. I just don't like wrecking board game pieces. Let me put the spine bar on first. And like so, it's kind of a tight fit. So I don't know the best way, best way to get that on there. Don't put it on upside down. Yeah, spine bar. Yeah. Ooh, I nicked it just a little bit. That's these spine bars. I don't know. I'm gonna use the term as much as I possibly can now because I know what it is. Spine bar, spine bar, spine bar. So move it down a bit, move it over a bit, and that's how it looks. So the idea is there are little notches in the bottom, so you got your little piece here, and the dice you line them up down here and the first one sort of notches into the little little spot and then the one that you actually use to pick your phase goes plunky dunky in the middle and if you use one to reassign it goes up here necessary i'm i'm not i don't know i'm not convinced that it is and then we've got a bit of a rivalry problem not a problem but like this is the replacement strip it's got an extra phase in rivalry so of course because it has an extra phase that spine bar isn't really going to fit this piece because it needs an extra thing right so like if you go for rivalry uh and you use it a bunch these are not a compelling part of this product and it's funny after complaining about the implementation that one of the competitors came up with with how things sit in the box i noticed that in this one they've done the exact same thing so they have a big uh trough in here to line up all of the different tiles which i will do in a second and show you what that looks like so again if you have rivalry there are extra rivalry tiles in there that presumably aren't going to fit in that because it's not like where you can pick up the divider and, and move it according to how many tiles you have and where you want them. Those uh, suckers are glued in there. Uh, and that's the last thing I'll mention. You saw me gluing. Why was I gluing? <laughs> I told myself I wouldn't glue. Uh, it's because I, I said that these, these things come together in a really tight fit. Well, this one didn't. I don't know if that's by design or if they changed their methods up or what, but these pieces fit so loosely together that I had to glue them. They just wouldn't stay together unless I glued them. And that wasn't the case, was it? In, in previous laser oxygen boxings, everything snapped together really, really tightly and it was tough to pry the stuff apart. So I, I did glue. And what I'll say if you're gluing is you should probably get like a paintbrush and put some glue in a little pot and apply it with a paintbrush. Don't be a complete animal like me and just squeeze it directly out of the bottle because then you get stuff like, I wonder if I can show you a piece. Uh, no, it's not gonna be easy to see on that. But a couple of my pieces, they got sort of like gluey, gluey glue marks. I had a paper towel when I was wiping off the excess and there was a lot of excess because I'm a complete monster. Uh, but you want like a semi damp paper towel just to wipe off some uh, glue excess. I shouldn't tell you, you know how to glue. Uh, but what I found interesting, telling even I'll say, is they had a little bit of space left over, I guess. So they had pieces where you could put together this little wooden die. And I'll read to you what they say on the on the instruction sheet here. It says, uh, these parts should be used to build uh, the cube, the dice of glory. It should be die of glory, but they're not an English first company. Uh, the die of glory, which the winner of the game will receive. Okay, so I guess they had a little bit of space left over and they decided to do something cute with it. You get this little wooden die. But uh, then they said the, the other part should be used to make this which is the first player marker rocket. Do you know Roll for the Galaxy? Have you ever played this game before? Think hard about that one. The first player rocket. There, there is no first player in Roll for the Galaxy. It's a simultaneous action selection game. So it suggests to me that whoever on the team designed this one, may not be all that familiar with Roll for the Galaxy. 
which is kind of a bummer to be honest. So I thought that was kind of like a goofy, weird addition, and it's going to take up room in the box, room that they could have left for rivalry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the stuff from the base game and from Ambition and put it in here in a time lapse. You'll see how it all fits in. And there are a couple of interesting features uh, that they designed into the boxes that I really want to show you, but I don't want to show you until the pieces are all in place. So stick me th with me through this next time lapse, and then I'll show you those cool features. <laughs> Alrighty, all done. I did not put this thing in the box because who cares? Here it is. I wanted to show you actually from the side, there is 0% box lift. So if that's something that drives you nuts, you know, the insert sits kind of high and the box doesn't quite fit all the way together, especially if you're a vertical store. Now, if you use these solutions from Laserox or uh, similar things made out of wood or foam core, I don't know that you can be a vertical store. Maybe with this one you can. Here, let's, let's store it vertically just for a few moments and we'll see what happens to the stuff inside. Okay, so I did away with all of the stuff that you find in Rivalry because they made the claim that they don't fit Rivalry, so of course, let's give them fair shakes. But it should be able to fit all of the base game and ambition, shouldn't it? So here we go, we'll open her up. And everything's kind of like, you know, sitting on top, those little acrylic screens that they put on there and the, the, the spine clips and all the flat stuff will come out and these single color player screens that are very thin and fall over very easily. It's another reason to have rivalries. They have thicker, nicer screens and player colors. The instruction booklets fit flat on top and here's what everything looks like inside. Doesn't this look nice? That stands out really beautifully. So all of the tiles come out of the bag and they just go in this big tile thing. And it was easy to take my rivalry tiles out because Rio Grande Games, the total boneheads printed the rivalry tiles on like different stock than the original tiles. So you can just tell by looking because they're glossier or by feel because they feel completely different in a game when you're supposed to blind draw tiles from a bag. You dorks. I don't know what they were thinking, but it was easy to split out the rivalry tiles anyway. I wouldn't want to do it at the end of every single game that I played though. I So I'll take that out. Here's the goofy die. I don't know if you want that. Maybe you like that. Maybe that's cool to you. Me, I don't know. I just think it takes up room in a box where we're trying to, you know, save a lot of room. But those features that I was going to tell you about, so they put little lift bars on this one so it's easy to pull out and you slide it open. Uh, you do get actual extra talent markers with Rivalry, so they're all in there. So Rivalry and Ambition, all of the talent markers will fit inside that box. This mechanism to put this lid on and, you know, drive it home into these two, that you see there's two pegs and two holes that it's supposed to go into, and it always kind of, they always sit low to me. So I, that never really works as well as I want it to. But anyway, there's that box. Interestingly, they made it so that your uh, double faction tiles uh, from the expansion from Ambition sit in here and all of the ones that come in the base game will fit flush in this box So if you don't have Ambition, you'll just kind of have like a big empty empty hole here to stick that goofy Star player rocket ship in or whatever you want to do with that uh, so this whole thing Again has sort of like a lift bar over here for for pulling it up and so I guess you put that on the table, but this is this is the advanced one, man. This is like the super tech. Check out what this does. So you pull the screen off, good, and you can reach in and grab the dice. And I've commented before that I don't really like wood or, or foam core inserts for this kind of thing because unlike plastic inserts, like plastic inserts can scoop the bottom so it's easier to dredge stuff up from the sides. But if you got all right angles, you can't do that. So this is what this box does. Let me get these faction tiles out of the way. 
And I haven't tried this out yet. I should put it down on the table. These sides lift up and just plop right open. So they're kind of like stalls or stables. And I don't know if you're supposed to tip everything out of there from, from there or what you're supposed to do, but both of them, whoo, hello. Both of them do it like that. So maybe that just makes the dice easier to grab. You'll notice if you know rivalry that I've got my dark blue dice in there too. So your rivalry dark blue dice will fit in there. But if you don't, uh, nothing's going to go in there. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stables uh, for your dice. And there are nine colors of dice. So if you have a touch of the OCD, and let's face it, if you've just spent 50 bucks to organize one of your board games, you do, then that might bug you that there aren't enough stables for the colors of dice. But again, if you don't have ambition, then you've got the right, oh, you have one empty actually, if you have ambition. I think, and I can't remember because I can't remember how many uh, black leader dice that Rivalry adds, but I think there may be few enough of them just to stick them up into this little, this little, trough up here. So maybe that's what's going on. That's for the black leader dice because there's only a few. Everybody needs woo, only one. But in rivalry, you can get into situations where you can buy more of them. So they had to add more. So maybe that's the situation. And there are enough stables for all the different colors of dice. Uh, there you go. Ah, so let me see. They told you not to glue this one because it's just little little holes keeping the flappies in. You put them up and then slot them down. So feature rich, feature rich insert here. And I'll slide this over to the side. And here's another couple of boxes that they engineered a bit more craftily than in the other inserts. This is your cups. Nothing's in there because you, you don't need the space, but I'm sure you could s stick something else useful in there. I don't know what do you want to do with this box right here. I should have mentioned, you know, let's take a little bit of time to appreciate the nice little etchings and designs they put on the box just to make it cool and to make it thematic and look nice on the table. So this one has another one of those slidey two prong slotty lids on it. You take that off and oh, look at that. There are all your little money token markers. Again, this is a weird Rio Grande thing. I've seen these in another game that they have, and I think it's just like, oh, we need something to mark your money. Quick, use the, the one that looks like Jumpman from the 286 days, or whatever the heck that is supposed to be. That doesn't look like the money symbol. And you think, oh, right, it's space, it's alien, it's the alien money symbol. Uh, no, it's not, because the money symbol in this game looks like a dollar sign with the you know, S with a line through it. So that's nonsense. So I don't know why they made them look like these. But uh, Laser Ox has etched this so that they fit in nice and beautiful. So that's, that's kind of nice. And then the front of it, sort of, now this is a little bit tight, and I think that the more the wood sits, sits into itself and feels out its place in the universe now that it's no longer a tree, I think this will loosen up a bit. But this front, so if this is kind of janky, that's not necessarily the piece's fault. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to ground it a little bit. What's supposed to happen, I feel like I'm trying out a magic trick on people the first time. No, 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 try, pick another card. Okay, so this, it, this door, Oh man, that's really, that's really stiff. Okay, this door is supposed to come right up like that. Okay, fine. And then this whole thing is slotted so that it hinges out. So these two boxes are complementary like that and they come out and there's all your VP chits. I think I've got some tenors in there maybe from Rivalry and they all fit in there. So that's the idea with those, with those little boxes. Again, it's a little annoying to get back in there. And finally, just to take a look at the rest of the inside, you've got spots for, this is labeled, I like I like this that it's labeled. So this says phase, so all of your phase tiles go in here and they all fit and even the extra one from Rivalry would slot in there because there's a little bit of room. And the base game homeworlds, and I guess, I forget if there are, yep, there are expansion homeworlds. So both your ambition and your base game homeworlds will fit right in there. And finally, the other thing that you get in Ambition are these gold tiles. So there's a whole stack of orange gold tiles and those will fit in right there. So that's what it all looks like. Uh, my comments, what I'll say is, I mean, all these little touches are really nice and neat and cool. As for, oh, I should mention that they've got wood running all the way around the perimeter of the box. So that's gonna keep your box nice and sturdy and tough and keep the corners from collapsing or somebody wrecking it when they kick it or what, which has happened to me. So what I'll say about Roll for the Galaxy, Ambition and Rivalry is this. 
one of the things people like about this game is that it's really easy to just dive into. You play it for half an hour, 45 minutes, pack it all up, and you're done. People really like that about it. And Ambition adds practically no time to that. All it adds are these gold tiles and some extra start worlds and one extra or two extra dice colors. So it, and they just play a little bit differently, but it doesn't add any extra time to the game really, which is, is great. But then you think like, why am I paying that much money for an expansion with only a couple of things in the box? So the rivalry is there's a whole, there's a whole lot more going on in it. I think maybe I've got some rivalry stuff here and I'll show you all the stuff from rivalry that didn't fit into that box. So We've got the instruction booklets. We've got these really nice and thick player screens. We've got new faction tiles. These are the new uh, uh, tiles that go in the bag that you can build your empire with. These are more new faction tiles. Did I get that right? Oh, maybe these are supposed to go in the base game. Uh, these are supposed to go, sorry, in the in the, in the the box there. Sorry about that, I messed that up. Uh, so these, forget these. But these, this, this is all rivalry stuff right here and then let me bring up the rest of the Ravelry box to see what, what didn't fit. So you've got nicer, thicker uh, little uh, uh, dice strips that have that extra phase on them so they won't fit those, those plastic pieces like I mentioned. And you have this which determines player order. I said that the rocket ship is goofy because there is no start player. There kind of is in Ravelry but it's more of a player order thing than a start player thing. Anyway, uh, you've got all these baggies full of little, little faces and little face popper things that you use to put on these dice and you've got these generic tiles that you can buy an extra phase strip. Uh, or phase, uh, phase tile. And then these little things that can increase or decrease your total money amount on your on your board. There's, uh, there's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot of stuff. So I'm surprised at the claim of a competitor that you could actually fit all of that stuff in the same box. That doesn't seem right, does it? Like, I'll, I'll believe that when, when I see it. But they both went for the option of sticking the tiles in the trough. Fine. So it may happen that you don't want to buy Rivalry. If you, even if you take a look at my how to play videos, if you look at the runtime for Ambition, it's like five minutes or something. And if you look at the runtime for Rivalry, it's like 30 or 40 minutes. And nobody watched either of them, which hurts my feelings, you guys, because they were a horrible amount of work. But it could be that you're happy with the base game or you're just happy just with the base game and ambition. And if that's the case, then you could do way worse than buying uh, this insert to fit all your stuff. It fits all your stuff uh, beautifully. This is gonna look nice on the table. That acrylic part on the top is definitely gonna make people go ooh and ah because it looks really nice, really nice in person. I think that that this, I, I'm nervous. I would be nervous about damaging my components by using these things. And I don't know that the, that the mylar, like I said, the, the the pieces that hold your dice in there are entirely necessary. I don't think I would even even use those, which is kind of a bummer because they're kind of like incorporated into the cost. I don't know if if Laserox is going. I think they designed this when only Ambition existed, and they were like, oh, they'll never come up with another expansion for Roll for the Galaxy. I'm gonna live forever. So I don't know if they're gonna go back to the drawing board and see if they can fit all the rivalry stuff in the box. I think that would be quite a challenge. They'd have to build. There would definitely be box lift in that circumstance, I can almost guarantee you. This product is interesting to you. If you only want Roll for the Galaxy or you want Roll for the Galaxy and Ambition, you don't care about rivalry, uh, then you definitely check this out. I've got a link below in the notes if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're checking this out on the Knights Around the Table website, I've got it down there too. If you like my verbal diarrhea style of board game rambling and you want to help me make more, then definitely hit three buttons that are very important. One looks like a thumb, one says subscribe, and one's like a bell. So when I put new stuff up, and I do every single week, you'll get notified when it's ready for you to watch. If you wanna make sure that I can keep making this kind of content, please head over to Patreon and consider joining my crew or making a one-time donation. And I take that money and I, sp I reinvest it in g equipment and gear and board games to buy to talk about to you and uh, groceries. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it enjoyable and we'll catch you in the next one. Did you just watch that whole thing? 
Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.